Greetings. Today we'll be looking at the concept of shadow price in linear programming. A linear programming is used in optimization problems, which usually come in the form of minimizing cost or maximizing profit. As you all know, to maximize a profit or to make a profit in any case, we need to sell products. And to make products, we need resources. The problem is that resources are limited. Now, this is what linear programming does. It gives us the best way to, to make a profit by using these limited resources. How to maximize that profit by using these limited resources. Let's say we want to sell product 1 and product 2. And to make these two products, the resources available are resource A and resource B. Now the linear optimization, linear programming will tell us how to best use these two resources to make those two products and then how many of each we should sell. What the shadow price tells us is how much profit would increase by if we could somehow get hold of one more unit of resource A or one more unit of resource B. Assuming the binding constraint property of course, which we'll be looking at when we actually do the example on pen and paper just now. So let's look at an example. Here we have a scenario that says two fragrances A and B are used to make the perfumes laughter and joy. The requirements, one liter of laughter requires three grams of fragrance A and four grams of fragrance B. One liter of joy requires nine grams of fragrance A and six grams of fragrance B. I want to add one more, to, one more thing to this list of requirements. I want to say that the company has decided that at least three liters of laughter has to be produced every week. So this is the weekly, thing, weekly things that we have. The total amounts available of fragrance A and B per week are 27 and 30 grams respectively, as you can see in the bottom right corner there. Now what we need to do is we need to set up a system of constraints that we can then translate into a graph. So let's, let's let laughter equal x. and let joy equal y. Now we need to set up the constraints using the information we were just given in that scenario. So the first constraint, let's look at fragrance A for that. Fragrance A, we have 27 grams available per week and we know that 3 grams of fragrance A goes into a liter of laughter and 9 grams of fragrance A go into a liter of joy. So 3 grams, let's call this constraint A for fragrance A, 3 grams, 3 grams going to laughter, so it's 3x plus 9y, because 9 grams go into, into joy, has to be less than or equal to 27, because we only have 27 units of fragrance A available per week, 27 grams. For fragrance B, we have that four grams go into every liter of laughter and six grams go into every liter of joy and the total amount of fragrance B available per week is 30 grams so it has to be less than or equal to that. What I also said is that the company decided that at least three liters of, fra of, uh, three liters of laughter at least three liters of laughter has to be produced every week Laughter is x, so let's say x has to be greater or equal to 3. And because we're just working in the first quadrant with linear programming, y also has to be greater or equal to 0. Now, let's plot this on a graph. Okay, let me just draw some values on here. 1, 2, 3, 4... 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, yeah, to plot these, the easiest way to do that is just to find your x and your y cuts or intercepts, plot the points and connect the lines. Okay, for fragrance A, the x intercept would be 3 times what gives you 27. 3 times 9, so the x intercept here is 9. And the y intercept, 9 times what gives you 27, 9 times 3. There we go. Now we just connect those lines. The nice straight line. For fragrance B, the x cut would be 
4 times what gives you 30, that will be 4 times 7.5, which is right here. And 6 times what gives you 30, 6 times 5, which is right there. And there we go, that's our next constraint. We know also that x has to be greater or equal to 3. So, draw a straight line up through the x-axis at 3. Now let's see which side of things we're looking at. Y greater than 0 just means working in this quadrant, which is already fine. We don't need to draw anything specific for that. Okay, we need to know x is greater or equal to 3, so we're looking at that side of this line. For constraint B, the 5 and the 7.5 intersects, we know it has to be less than or equal to 30, so we're also looking at the less than side of that line. And the same with the top one, we're looking at less than or equal to 27. So here we go, everything points towards this little region as our feasible region is what we call this. So I'm going to shade that just so we know what we're working with. And now the optimal solution, which in this case would be profit, let's make up a profit function before we go on. Let's say that the profit that we make, the company makes, is equal to 30 Rand for each liter of laugh trade cells plus 50 rand for each liter of joy it sells. So that is now what we call our objective function or our optimal function. And to find where that is the best, where it is optimal, where it is maximum, we look at the four vertices, or all the vertices, which is in this case of four. That one, let's call it A. This one, let's call it B. This one here, let's call that C. And this one, which is obviously not going to be, and call it D. Now we need to find out which one of these vertices has the maximum value that satisfies this optimal function and solution. Okay, now two ways to do that. We can either just do it with the gradient function that you learned, probably learned in high school, or you could just substitute each point in its, in its own turn and see which one yields the highest value for P. You'll find that this point B here is at the point 6 and 1. The B's value is 6 and 1, and if we substitute that into this optimal value equation, we'll find P equals 30 times 6 plus 50 times 1, which is equal to 230. And that is the highest value. You'll see all the other others we substitute in are less than 230. So that is our optimal solution to this linear programming problem. Okay, now for the real reason we're here, the shadow price. The shadow price tells us that if we had one extra unit of one limited resource, which in this case would be fragrance A or B, those are limited, eh? then how much would the objective function, in this case the profit, change by? So if instead of having 27 grams of fragrance A available, if we had 28 grams instead available, what would the profit then be? Would it be less or more, and how much more or less? And the same with fragrance B, with a 30. If we make that 31 instead of 30, what would the profit then be? In order to do this, we first need to find the new coordinates of point B here, because this is where these two lines intersect. And this intersection is the only intersection, that means these are binding constraints. x greater or equal to 3, that's not a binding constraint, that's this line. It, we can see if we move it to the left or to the right by a couple, it doesn't influence that value at all. It doesn't influence that point, that point would stay where it is. So only that first and second constraints are binding, and they're the ones we're going to be looking at. So if you in increase one of them on the right hand side, the 27 or the 30, we increase one of those by one unit, what is the new profit, maximum profit, going to be? So let's have a look. Yeah, let's start with fragrance A. Fragrance A, we had 3x plus 9y is equal to 27, but we're going to make it 28 to start with now, because we want to see how that changes. And for fragrance B, we're not going to change. We had there 4x plus 6y is equal to 30. Now we need to do a simultaneous equation solving here. I like the elimination method instead of the substitution method, but in order to do that we need either the x's or the y's to have the same coefficient. 
I'm going to multiply this whole equation by 4 and I'm going to multiply the bottom one by 3 all the way through. So let's see what happens now. Top one by, multiplied by 4 will yield 12x plus 36y is equal to 112. We multiply the bottom one by 3 all the way through. That will give you 12x plus 18y equals 90. Now I want to subtract the bottom one from the top. 12x minus 12x is nothing. 36y minus 18y will give us 18y. And then 112 minus 90 gives us 22. So therefore the y coordinate, the new y coordinate now, is 1.22 recurring. Now let's see what the x coordinate will be. To find that we'll substitute this y value back into one of the equations. Let's say back into equation 2. That gives us 4x plus 6 times 22 over 18. We'll just use the fraction instead of the rounded R value here. Equals 30. So 4x equals 30 minus this is 3, 30 minus. 7, 3, 3, 3, three etc. Then x is equal to 22.6 recurring divided by 4, which gives us 5,67 approximately. So there you've got those are your two new values now. And to see what the shadow price is, we're going to plug these two values back in these two values back into our profit equation profit value function to see what the new profit is like we can see here it was 230 with the normal constraints so now we're going to say p equals 30 times x which is 5,67 plus 50 times your y value which is 1,22 then what do we get? we get 231,1 which is 1 rand and 10 cents more than the initial profit so that's therefore our shadow price on fragrance A shadow price on fragrance A is 1.1. Now let's quickly work through the same one for fragrance B. I'm not going to do all the calculations again. We just see if we, if the initial formula of fragrance A, we have 3x plus 9y equals 27, and the new one for fragrance B, 4x plus 6y equals now 31. We're increasing it by one unit. Then if we do a simultaneous equation solving, I'm going to do elimination again, but I won't write everything down. We find that y, the y value is equal to 0 0.83, and the x value, if you substitute that y value back in, is equal to 6.5. If we substitute these values back into the profit function, profit equals 30 times your x value, plus 50 times your y value 0 0.83, oh that's ugly that yields a profit then of 236.5 again if we compare this with the initial profit that's 6 rand and 5 cents, 6 rand and 50 cents more than the initial profit so the shadow price of fragrance B is equal to 6.5 now if the shadow price, if for some reason if we increase the constraints and the profit now was less, let's say the profit was 218 instead of 230, then our shadow price would be negative 12. So that's important. Now, these ones are both positives. Both of them have positive shadow prices. And that's it. That's the idea of a shadow price. How much does the objective function value change by if you change the binding constraints is right hand values by one unit. If you increase that by one unit for either of the binding constraints, 
how much does the objective function value change by? Well, that's it for Shadow Prize.